So one of the biggest questions for the Packers coming into 2021 is basically how is this defense going to perform under new defensive coordinator Joe Barry? Obviously with the Packers bringing in a new defensive coordinator, there is some uncertainty and there are some questions as to you know how he is going to utilize this defense. Obviously we can speculate on some things. From what he's done in the past, he's talked a little bit in his press conferences on some of his plans, but I just don't think we'll really know what we're going to see from this defense until the season gets started coming in to 2021. Um, but I have some thoughts on this Packers defense. I want to sort of break it down today overall. You can see here in the screen this um, this little, I guess, graph of the Packers defense from PFF. I thought it was a very useful tool to sort of show um, sort of their prediction for the Packers defensive roster. Obviously, that may not be exactly it, but it's sort of a good, I think, visual to break down this Packers defense. But I'm going to give my thoughts on why I do think the Packers are going to take a huge step forward um, on the defensive side of the ball coming into 2021. If you guys are new here, you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, you want to see more Packers news, Packers content, Packers analysis, that's all I pretty much put out on this channel. So feel free to subscribe to the channel, and it would be awesome if you like the video as well down below. So first off, taking a look at this Packers defense, you can see it right here. They have some rookies in there, some new, you know, that new uh, linebacker Campbell there as well. Um, but first off, I want to take a look at the Packers stats from last year, sort of where they ranked and yeah, basically where they ranked last season. So total yards, the Packers allowed the ninth most yards per game. So 10th or top 10, pretty solid. 334 yards allowed per game. At points allowed, we are 13th with 23.1 points allowed per game. Passing yards allowed per game, 7th at 221 um, passing yards allowed per game. Rush yards, 10th with 109.8 rush yards per game. So, so far, pretty solid, almost in the top 10 in three of those four stat categories. The defense, you know, did pretty solid last year. Um, but when it comes to rush yards, uh, rush yards per attempt, they were 18th at 4.5 yards per carry, even though the rush yards were in the top 10. With the Packers obviously being being ahead in lots of games with Aaron Rodgers balling out as he did in his MVP season. So other teams just weren't really able to run the ball a lot just because when you're down by so much, you can't just sit there and run the ball. You got to start passing. So that's sort of why that makes sense. Um, but they definitely struggled a little at times when it came to yards per carry. And then one stat that they were pretty low on, um, which is a lot different from the rest, when it comes to takeaways per game, the Packers were 25th in the NFL, only getting 1.1 takeaways per game. So I think that's definitely a big, an area they need to take a step forward coming into 2021. So now that we have that, let's take a look at this defense right here and sort of break down what the Packers defense was like in 2020 and sort of what they could like look like in 2021. Have they made improvements? Have they downgraded in some areas? Um, so first off, taking a look at the interior defensive line. They This is the base defense they have here. Um, Kenny Clark, uh, solid Kinsley Kiki, Dean Lowry. I think the the defensive defensive line, the interior was, was one area people thought the Packers maybe needed to make some improvements coming into um, this next season. They did come in and draft Tedrell Slayton later in the draft. Uh, he's probably more a run stopper, so maybe he comes in later in the season and can be utilized um, on those plays where we you know need to stop the run. But overall, I think we're gonna see a similar production from this group. Um, you know, Kenny Clark obviously. One of the best nose tackles. He wasn't as good last year. As you can see here, 23rd out of 126. This is PFF grade, so basically where they graded these players, which is pretty useful. You can see on all the players they have here. Um, but overall, I think, you know, it's probably the same when it comes to the, the interior defensive line as what we saw last year. Hopefully, Kenny Clark can, you know, step up once again. And hopefully, Kinsley Kiki can take a huge step forward, which I think is possible. And um, I'm not sure what we'll see from Dean Lowry. Hopefully, he can improve as well, because you can see here, he was 79th out of 126, so not not very good. Then if we move to the outside linebacker, um, you know, pretty much the same as last year. We got Zadarius Smith, we got Preston Smith, and we have Rashawn Gary, who definitely took a huge step forward in that 2020 season. Haven't really lost any guys when it comes to that area. So with Preston Smith, he definitely struggled a lot in 2020. His pressures dropped from 62 pressures in 2019 to 29 pressures in the 2020 season. So he definitely took a huge step back in 2020, and hopefully he can rebound, because you can see here, 88th out of 108 edge, edge guys um, for Preston Smith, so definitely struggled uh, last year in that category. So in 2019, Zadari Smith was one of the best edge guys in the NFL. He ranked third by PFF in 2019, and then 2020, he ranked 14th, so still pretty solid. And then taking a look at Rashawn Gary, he is not on here right now, but obviously you know, the Packers moved through Zadari Smith, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary. Um, coming into his third year, 2020 was a huge year for Rashawn Gary. Definitely took a huge step forward in his second season 
with the Green Bay Packers, performed better than Preston Smith. So he had 46 pressures last season as compared to Preston Smith's 29. So I think taking a look at these edge guys, I would say that they're going to be much better coming into the season. I think Preston Smith will do better. I just think last year was a pretty down year from him, and I feel like he'll rebound a little bit. Um, that's my hope. That's my prediction. And then I think Rashawn Gary, too, coming into his third season, I see no reason why he can't continue to develop. So, so far, pretty much the same guys in those two position groups as last season. So now moving to the inside linebackers, they have here Chris Barnes and then the newest addition that happened in the past couple weeks, Devondre Campbell, who is more of a veteran guy. And so with the Packers, before adding Campbell, they have Chris Barnes and Kamal Martin, two young guys. Obviously last season we had Christian Kirksey. We end up releasing him. He just didn't really do too good last season as the Packers, you know, maybe had hoped he would do. And so we had two young guys in Chris Barnes and Kamal Martin, who I feel like coming to their second season, you just expect them to, you know, take a huge step forward. And now with the addition of another linebacker, a veteran guy, I think that does nothing but help the Packers inside linebacker group just because, you know, adding some veteran presence there, I bet he can teach them some things and, um, you know, basically do some things that maybe they couldn't potentially do. And then the biggest area I think of improvement for the Packers defense this season or in this draft in this offseason is the cornerbacks. I think the cornerbacks was one area – People were really hoping we'd come in and draft someone. We did come in and draft someone in Eric Stokes, cornerback, um, in the first round of this draft. And so I think, you know, taking a look at the Packers cornerbacks from last season, obviously Jair Alexander, he graded as the number one cornerback right here. First out of 121 quarterbacks, he had a monster season, so there's no question Jair Alexander is a beast. Outside of him, though, Kevin King struggled a lot last season. He ranked 99th out of 121 cornerbacks, so not very good. And then Shannon Sullivan, more of a slot, you know, cornerback, he graded 66th out of 121 cornerbacks. And so I think that was a very big need for the Packers, and they came and addressed it right away with Eric Stokes. And so I think coming into the season, um, the Packers bring back Kevin King as well. The only thing is with Eric Stokes, he is a rookie, so I'm not too sure if he'll come in right away. Maybe he will, but I do think it's going to take some time for him to develop. So maybe he will come in a little bit later in the season, maybe earlier in the season, who knows exactly how fast he will develop. So maybe the Packers start off with the same cornerback as last year, you know, in Kevin King and um, Shannon Sullivan. But maybe over time, over the season, Eric Stokes can develop, can grow um, in that cornerback position for the Packers. So I do think that is an upgrade there. And I think over time, if not this year, next year, um, I think Eric Stokes will definitely move into the starting group, potentially take over for Kevin King, maybe Shannon Sullivan. Who knows exactly. But the Packers did also come in and add another cornerback, in Shamar Jean Charles later in the draft. He's more of like a nickel slot kind of guy. Um, I think he was like the fifth round, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not if I'm not forgetting. Um, so I think he he's going to take some time to develop, but I've, I've heard lots of people say that he has lots of potential. So that could be interesting. Maybe in the future, he replaces Shannon Sullivan. Maybe, maybe he's not that good, but who knows? Um, but I do think the Packers definitely bolster their cornerback group. So overall, um, in this defense... We haven't really lost any guys that are of much value to this defense, and I think all we've done is add important keys. We added another inside linebacker. We come in and add first-round cornerback, and so overall, I think this Packers defense is going to be much better when you just solely take a look at the roster than last season, and then you add in Joe Barry, who we don't exactly know what we're going to see from him. That's sort of the question, you know, what is he going to do coming into 2021? Is he going to be able to really get this team to work together and improve coming into 2021? Because obviously, uh, or honestly, the Packers had a pretty solid defense last season. Uh, you know, top 10 when it comes to yards, 13th in, you know, points per game. They definitely struggled at times, especially in the NFC Championship game. Definitely left, left a sour taste in Packers fans' mouths. Um, but overall, I think all the Packers did this offseason to keep, you know, majority of the group together, you know, in Darnell Savage, Adrian Amos, Jair Alexander, we didn't lose any of our key guys. And so I think that is very crucial. And I think that, you know, as years go by, and you have the same guys around you, the chemistry is built, you know, the players know each other better, obviously, relationships are important. And I think that the Packers did a good job in keeping this defense pretty much together and adding a few guys that could come and make a big difference. Eric Stokes, um, Devondre Campbell recently, um, Tedderell Slayton on the defensive line. Some good adds by this Packers team overall. And so I do think that this Packers defense will take a step forward coming into this next season with Joe Barry. And I'm pretty pumped to see what Joe Barry is going to bring. I've heard that like he's a lot more vocal in practice when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. And so I just do think there's going to be a new energy here. And I do think that the additions the Packers made were big. And we did just didn't really lose anyone um, this offseason when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. 
besides Christian Kirksey, but I mean, I don't think he really, he didn't really do too much last season. So overall, I'm pumped about this Packers defense. I think they have a lot, um, a lot of ways that they can sort of grow and develop coming into this next season with Savage and moving up, Amos doing better as well, Jack Alexander being a beast, and hopefully these rookies can develop. Because if these rookies can develop, like Eric Stokes, if he can come in and develop quickly, that would obviously be great. Maybe he takes Kevin King's spot. Maybe he doesn't. Um, but even if he doesn't come in this season, I think the next couple of years, Stoke is going to be a beast in the NFL. And if we can keep Jair Alexander around with Stokes as well, and he can sort of move up and develop, I think that this Packers defense has nowhere to go but up in these next coming years. Obviously, the biggest question is, is this man right here? Is Aaron Rodgers going to be here? That is the question. We do not know the answer, but that is a question. Hopefully, he is but I have high hopes for this defense. But let me know your thoughts on the defense um, down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, it'd be awesome if you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you've yet to subscribe. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I really do. Um, thank you for the support. And I'll see you guys coming up soon on the next video.